Hello students, in this video we'll discuss discrete Markov chains. If I'm given a set S, let's just say this is the numbers 1, 2, all the way up to N, or maybe even just the natural numbers, called the state space, a collection of random variables um. x1 let's start with x0 actually x0, x1 x2 xn goes on forever is called a Markov chain if the following condition is satisfied. If the probability that x n plus one is equal to i, where i is in this state space over here, given that x n is equal to j, x n minus one is equal to x n minus one all the way down to x0 is some number x0. So if I know the information about all of the process at time 0, at time 1, at time 2, at time n, and I ask what's the probability of the n plus first step being equal to i, this is simply equal to, is equal to nothing more than just the probability that xn plus 1 is equal to i, given that xn was equal to j. So I don't need to, I can forget about the distant past, so we forget the distant past. And that type is okay, great. And we'll build some notation for this. And so the notation we're going to use, we're going to say that this is really just P. I go from J to I. So I start at J and I go to I at step from at starting at step n. Okay? So in principle this could depend on n, but a very common case is when this is independent of n. So we're going to talk about that. It's called, those are called time homogeneous Markov chains. So that's the condition. So let me give it let me give an example of this over here. So let me let S be the state space 0 and 1. And I'm going to think of 0 as a, lo a, a loss and 1 as a win. Okay? And we're going to say this, we're going to say the probability of going from 0 to 0, a loss to a loss, the probability of going from a loss to a loss, independent of time, is going to be, let's say, 0.8. The probability of going from a loss to a win is going to be 0.2. The probability of going from a win to a loss, let's say that's 0.4. And let's say the probability of going from a win to a win is going to be 0.6. Okay? So that's my, that is an example of a Markov chain. And so what do I mean by this? I mean that for any n, these are the corresponding probabilities. So in other words, the probability that x n plus 1 is equal to i in the state. So in other words, i here will be either 0 or 1. So i will either be 0 or i will be 1, given that x n was equal to j in all the distant x0 is equal to some number x0, is just the probability of going from j to i. So this is just going to be the p from j to i. Okay, for these values over here. So in this case, j and i are in the state space. Okay, and so we can represent this Markov chain as a matrix. So there's a matrix representation of this. And so here's my matrix p over here. My matrix p is going to be this. It's going to be a 0 0.8. It's going to be a 0 0.2. It's going to be a... 0.4, and it's going to be a 0.6. That's my matrix. And I typically like to write like the, uh, the states above the matrix over here. So over here, we're going to say that this is a what? This is a loss, right? This is the loss over here. This is the win. This is the, this row over here is the loss, and this is the win. So we can sort of code it like this. Going from a loss to a loss is 0.8. Going from a loss to a win is 0.2. Going from a win to a loss is 0.4. And going from a win to a win is 0.6. And so we can know this, that this is, a, this is called a Markov matrix or, or stochastic matrix. This is a stochastic matrix. Okay. 
And so let's make some, determine some properties of these PJI, okay? So what can we notice over here? So we can notice, so what are the properties of these PJI? So notice properties of PJI, okay? Well, clearly the first property over here has to be that PJ. I, and in principle, this can depend on n. For our example, this is not depending on n, this is for any time this is gonna work. So this is an example over here, this is called time homogeneous. Doesn't depend on time. Okay, these numbers have to be non-negative because they're probabilities, and they have to sum up, every row in this matrix has to sum up to one, right? So if I sum the P, I, J, this has to be equal to one, so if I sum over I, goes from one in principle, it can go from up one up to n in this general case, has to be one for all j. Yeah. And that's just equivalent to saying that the rows sum up to one. So this means that the rows of this matrix hey. sum to one, okay? Now in further videos, what we're gonna see is we're gonna figure out how I can determine the long-term behavior of these Markov chains by multiplying this matrix by itself over and over and over again. And we'll see that in future videos. Thank you very much.